<laughs> Yo, look at live the chapter two check in version one solutions with me, your host, Mr. Goldman and second period. Yay, second period. And Maddie wanted a special close up. All right, here we go. I can convert a fraction to a decimal. The idea here was that you were going to use the magic of long division. I know some of you probably know already that 1 fourth is equal to 0 0.25, but let's show that. Uh, 4 goes outside the house. 1 goes inside the house. I'm going to put a couple decimal points. 4 goes into 1 zero times. Bring the decimal straight up. 4 goes into 10 twice. 2 times 4 is 8. 10 minus 8 is 2, so my remainder is 2. I bring the 0 straight down. Uh, 4 goes into 25 times. 5 times 4 is 20, remainder 0. Because I have a remainder 0, I know this is a terminating decimal, uh, and it is 0 0.25. Hopefully some of you already know what 1 third is as a decimal, but let's show that also with long division. 3 goes into 1 0 times. Bring the decimal straight up. 3 goes into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. My remainder is 1. Bring the 0 down. And I have 10. 3 goes into 10 times. Well, that's familiar. I've already done that. So I know this is going to repeat. 0 0.3 repeating. We had a very common mistake on 7 eighths. Uh, let's use some long division. 8 goes outside. Top dog gets the house. 7.0. I'm going to put three zeros this time just for fun. 8 goes into 7 zero times, bring the decimal point straight up. 8 goes into 78 times. 8 times 8 is 64. My remainder is 6. Bring the zero down. 8 goes into 67 times. Here was the mistake. A lot of people thought 8 times 7 was 56. No. Ha. Woohoo. I mean, that's right. A lot of people thought 8 times 7 is 54. It is 56. Uh, if you put 54 here, your remainder would have been 6, and then you thought you would have gotten a repeating fraction, or repeating decimal, right? Because you would have had the remainder. Uh, but it's actually a remainder of 4. Bring down the 0. 8 goes into 45 times. 5 times 8 is 40. Remainder 0. So I know I have a terminating decimal that is 0 0.875. Next standard, converting decimals to fractions, 0 0.25. It was as low as terms, 0 0.25. This is 25 hundredths, because the 5 is in the hundredths place, so it's 25 hundredths. If you wrote that as your answer, did you get credit? Yes, because I'm such a nice guy. I know. Uh, but it did say lowest terms, so let's... We're going to divide by a giant one, and we can do this because when we divide by one, we don't change the value. Uh, I picked 25 because 25 is a factor of both 25 and 100, meaning uh, 25 and 100 are both divisible by 25. 25 divided by 25 is 1. 100 divided by 25 is 4, so we have 1 fourth. Now, if you were paying attention up here, you would have known that 1 fourth is equal to 0.25. Uh, over here we have four tenths because the four is in the tenths place. Well, that's just four tenths. We're going to divide by two over two because both of those numbers are divisible by two, and we get two fifths. Um, Zero point one six nine. All of that repeating. You just kind of had to be paying attention in class or know the algebra from the AMPC club. But I, I don't really. Yeah. Uh, if this was not repeating. It would be 169 thousandths, because the nine is in the thousandths place, uh, because it does repeat. It should be very close to this, right? A couple people made some mistakes here. Um, 0 0.169 repeating is 169 over 999, nine, nine, right? Uh, very similar numbers, right? These are very close to each other, so our, our, our fractions should be very close to each other. So make sure you didn't just put two nines or four nines or anything. So that's that. Adding fractions with unlike denominators. This is super easy. You just add straight across. You get three and eight. 
No, of course not. That would be silly. Woohoo! JK, everybody. We need to find common denominators. Now, on this first one, I'm going to show you the full. If you're not sure how to find a common denominator, uh, here is how you would do it. We have our two fractions, our one third and two fifths. And we are going to multiply by a giant one. Why? Because if we multiply by one, we don't change the value. And that's very important. Uh, I need to find a number uh, It is a common multiple of 3 and 5, meaning a number that both 3 and 5 multiply into evenly. Um, 15 is, yes, that, that is our lowest common multiple in this case. Uh, what always works, if you're not sure, is multiply them together. That will give you a common multiple. So now I go to my giant 1 set up here, and I go, when I multiply fractions, I multiply straight across. So I need to figure out what times 3 equals 15. Well, that is just 5. So that makes that part true. And now, if I want to make this a 1, if the denominator is 5, my numerator also has to be 5. So now I multiply straight across. 1 times 5 is 5. And 1 third is equal to 5 fifteenths. Those are equivalent fractions, which is a fancy w way of saying they're the same. Uh, not the same, but they're equal. All right, down here, 5 times what is 15? Well, that's 3. Again, if 3 is my denominator, my numerator has to also be 3. If this is to equal 1, 2 times 3 is 6. So 2 fifths is equal to 6 fifteenths. So instead of 1 third plus 2 fifths, I'm going to do 5 fifteenths plus 6 fifteenths, and that equals 11 fifteenths. Okay? We keep the numerator, the, sorry, the denominator the same, and we just multiply through, uh, multiply through, huh. add the numerators once we have a common denominator. All right, uh, my common denominator, if my denominators are 4 and 3, is going to be 12. Uh, 3 fourths to get to some, a, a fraction over 12, I'm going to multiply by a giant one of 3 over 3, so it's going to be 9 twelfths. Uh, one third, I'm going to multiply by four over four, so that is going to be four twelfths. And if you're unsure about how any of this, please come see me. Thirteen twelfths, or that's a good answer. One and one twelfth, that's a good answer. Uh, this next one, people got. If you did just multiply these two together, and you got a pretty big denominator, and it caused some people to make a lot of little errors. Um, but since 5 is a uh, factor of 45, uh, I can just convert 3 fifths if I multiply by 9 over 9, which is a giant one. I get 27 40 fifths. So now I can do 23 40 fifths plus 27 40 fifths, and that gives me 50 40 fifths. If you wrote that, did you get credit? I'm so nice. Probably too nice. Yes, you did. Uh, also, 10 ninths, or 1 and 1 ninth, or 1 and 5 45ths, all kinds of good answers. Um, adding positive and negative numbers. 7 positives, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3 negatives, 1, 2, 3. That makes what? Four. Well, 4, but the circled part is? Six. 0. Zero. The circle part is zero because the three positives and the three negatives cancel out. So my answer is four. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then three more. Right? This is seven plus negative ten plus negative three. These all make what? Zero. zero. And I'm left with negative six. Negative six. Uh, I'm not going to do the tiles for this one. We could have. Um, but how many negatives are there if I have 13 negatives plus 5 negatives? 18. 18. This is negative 18. And if I have 18 plus negative 18, <coughs> that all goes away because it's 0 and I'm left with just 20. Wonderful. Uh, negative 4 times 2. This is removing 4 groups of positive 2. Or just think of it as 4 times 2, which is 8. And if you have a negative times a positive, that's always going to be a negative. Negative 8. Seven groups of negative 9. That's a lot of negative 9s. Uh, 7 times 9 is 63. 
uh, a positive times a negative is always negative. Two groups of negative 5 is negative 10, plus four groups of negative 8 is negative 32. If I have 10 negatives and I add 32 more negatives, I have 42 negatives. Wonderful. Uh, and now, everybody's favorite, multiplying mixed numbers. Uh, I have to convert to improper fraction first. One and a half is three halves, times one and a fourth is five fourths. If I multiply straight across, I have 15 eighths. Uh, we had a lot of people making some silly mistakes with multiplying, and they were doing all kinds of stuff. Cross multiplying, doing weird, just maybe some people, a lot of people added some parts and multiplied other parts. So, fractions are complicated. 4 and 2 sixths is 26 sixths times uh, 10 thirds. So I get 260 eighteenths, uh, which is 130 ninths, which is 14 and 4 ninths. All of those answers are okay. Uh, this last one's a little tricky because the numbers got a little bit bigger. Uh, 4 and 5 sevenths is 33 sevenths times 6 and 9 elevenths is 75 elevenths. If you just multiply these across, uh, it's a big number. I believe it's 2,475 77ths. Ooh, I should check my work there. Hold on. I'm that good. Um, now, uh, a little trick though, if you know how to cross simplify, do I have another pen, pen color? Yes. If we have 33 sevenths times 75 elevenths, I can cross simplify 33 just like an 11, just like I would if they were uh, right above each other. So I can divide both of these by 11. 33 divided by 11 is 3. 11 divided by 11 is 1. 3 times 75 is 225, 7 times 1 is 7. So much easier to do that problem than this problem. They're both right. We could have also written this as 32 and 1 7. But again, I like improper fractions. So um, if you need to take a retake, do the Khan Academy that's assigned to you. A little bit different. Uh, this test. Uh, we'll talk about that in class, but good luck. Come see me if you have any questions. Uh, this stuff's important to get so we can do the more uh, complex stuff later on in second period. Say goodbye, everybody! It's not pa it's not stopping. It's literally not stopping. <laughs>